all right beta uh, let us see uh, how to prepare a statement of financial position now we have an examination question with the name of surya surya in the is in the business as a sole trader okay the following balances are extracted from a books on 31st march 2016 now as you can see if the year is ending on march 16 then the year must have been started on after march comes april okay so the year must have been started on 1st april 2015 why because 1st april 2016 would be new year for surya okay so the last year the previous year was april 2015 now as you can see there is a list of balances given and the things that i have highlighted the items that i have highlighted i have already used these items while preparing an income statement okay but now what i need to do i need to prepare an sfp we have already done making an income statement now we need to prepare the second requirement for this question that is part b what we need to do we need to prepare a statement of financial position statement of financial position uh, is worth 16 mark uh, in this question uh, given by the examiner and the previous name was balance sheet but this terminology is outdated and obsolete so therefore we do not need to write balance sheet instead we are going to write statement of financial position now first of all i am uh, starting with the heading although usually heading is mostly given in the examination question but still uh, uh, here it is not given because i am uh, writing it on a plain piece of paper so therefore i am putting up my own heading now first of all we need to write the name of the owner that is surya then the statement of financial position then as at so what we need to do we, we are preparing an sofp uh, at this particular point in time that is 31st march 2016 now basically dear uh, sofp is based on accounting equation and accounting equation says assets always equal capital plus liabilities so we are going to start with assets although we can skip writing assets so uh, it does not uh, cost you any mark if we uh, can skip the word asset okay after assets there are two types of asset uh, non current assets and current assets so first of all we are going to write non current asset now what are these three columns uh, are for uh, we are uh, going to use it uh, during the question but uh, for non current assets we are going to write three headings first column is the cost of non current asset second heading is accumulated depreciation and third heading is nbv so cost means uh, the actual amount we paid for while buying these assets and accumulated depreciation is the total depreciation till date and nbv is net book value is the value remaining in our box after charging depreciation okay now let us see in this question surya question how uh, which non current assets do we have now as you can see uh, we have a leasehold premises leasehold premises means we have bought this premises on lease okay and uh, the life is 25 years okay uh, if we have uh, bought an asset for more than use for more than one year in the business it is termed as a non current asset so the cost is 100000 this is the actual amount that we paid for uh, when we bought this asset on lease okay then we need to write accumulated depreciation now another name for accumulated depreciation beta is provision for depreciation now as you can see we have provision for depreciation previously that is 7000 provision for depreciation also known as accumulated now this is the depreciation uh, that is till last year okay this is not uh, at the end of the year instead it is start of the year or the end of the last year why because that uh, this year's depreciation still needs to be calculated in an income statement now as you can see we have already uh, made an income statement and let us revise how did we calculated the depreciation for leasehold now we need to for this we need to go through the adjustments again as you can see note 6 it is written an appropriate amount on the leasehold should be charged now what is the appropriate amount the examiner is not mentioning and uh, we need to use some of our brains and as you can see we paid 1 lakh and for 1 lakh we are benefiting uh, from this premises for 25 years so what we need to do if the life is given uh, it is uh, termed as a straight line method so what we need to do we need to divide this cost with the life okay so the formula would be cost divided by life 
one lakh divided by twenty five years. Now the depreciation for each year is four thousand. Okay. Now as you can see, this year depreciation is four thousand, and previously the depreciation that we do have total is four thousand. Uh, seven thousand. Sorry. So seven thousand previously, and this year's four thousand. So what we need to do? We need to add up both of these. Seven plus four would be eleven thousand. Okay. So the total depreciation till date, accumulated depreciation is eleven. Now this means the one lakh that we paid, a uh, hundred thousand that we paid, out of this eleven thousand asset has been used. Okay. Utilized or depreciated. Now we need to deduct this eleven thousand from hundred thousand, and the remaining value that we do have is. Eighty-nine thousand. Okay, Th this is how we calculate NBV for non-current asset. Secondly, beta, we have another asset that is computers. Now, as you can see, computers. Uh, how much computers cost? Uh, so the total cost of computers is forty-four thousand. Uh, now we also need to see: is there any adjustment relating to computer? Yes. As you can see, note number five: a computer costing eight thousand have been recorded in the maintenance account. Now, my dear students, maintenance is basically an expense for the business. Ah, uh, is ah, uh, it is known as a revenue expenditure, and computer is basically a non-current asset, and it is known as a capital expenditure. So, what we did by mistake that we included an asset account as an expense. So, what we need to do now, we need to credit the expense account, and we need to debit the computer asset account. So, what we need to do, we need to add up the eight thousand. So these adjustments that uh, are given in the examination, what we need to do, uh, we uh, need to. There is a technique known as double take technique. Now, what is this double take? Uh, you have heard of double take uh, mostly in WhatsApp. What while doing WhatsApp chat, there is a double take there as well. But there is a double take technique in the SOFP as well. Now, what is this double take, my dear students? All of these adjustments that is additional information. These needs to be used two times. Okay, all of these adjustment need to be to uh, used two times. Now, as you can see, note number five, we have already used this once. When while making an income statement, we have already used it once. Ah, uh, we credited the computer maintenance account while maintaining income statement, and now what we need to do, we need to debit the asset account. Okay, so what we need to do, we are going to apply the double take in this. And we'll be taking it one more time. Now, as you can see, the question here mentions non-current asset that is forty-four thousand for computers. And what we need to do, we need to add up this as well, eight thousand. So forty-four thousand plus eight thousand. Now the total that we do have is forty-four plus eight, that is fifty-two. So let me take it once again. So therefore, I'm sure that I've already used this adjustment twice. Okay, so sometimes we use uh, the adjustment once in an income statement, and twice uh, in the second. Secondly, in the SOFP, and uh, sometimes we use both of uh, both of the times while making an income statement. And there can be a situation while we are making uh, using the adjustment uh, both the times while make preparing an SOFP. Okay, so most of the time we use uh, once in it while making an income statement. And secondly, while making an SFP, so this is the total value of computer that is fifty-two thousand. Now, what is the accumulated depreciation that we do have? As you can see, the computer's provision for depreciation that we do have is sixteen thousand six hundred previously. Now, what we need to do? We need to add up this year's depreciation as well. Now, as you can see, a computer depreciation we have already learned how to calculate it, and this is double eight five zero. Now let me give you a quick overview that how did we reach this figure of eight eight five zero depreciation of computer? If you haven't made an income statement, we cannot uh, prepare an SFP. And let us see uh, the rate for depreciation on computer is twenty five percent reducing. Now, my dear students, in a reducing balance, we always charge the percentage on not the cost instead on the net book value. Now, as you can see, the cost of computer was. Forty-four, and we need to add up this uh, eight thousand as well, and this would become fifty-two. And out of this fifty-two, what we need to do? We need to de uh, we deducted this sixteen thousand six hundred. Now, as you can see, forty-four plus eight fifty-two minus sixteen thousand six hundred. Why are we deducting this sixteen thousand six hundred? Because it is a reducing balance. But in a reducing balance method, what we need to do? We need to deduct the total depreciation till date. 
in order to arrive the value of NBV net book value. And on this net book value, we applied 25%. Okay. So this is 8850. 8, is this year's depreciation. And previously, we had 16,600. So what we need to do, we need to add up both of these 16,600 plus 8850. Now the total depreciation that we have now is 25450. Okay. So we need to deduct uh, the provision from the original cost to arrive at the net book value. So lastly, the third non-current asset that we do have is office furniture. Now, as you can see, the cost of furniture is 15,500. If there is no other adjustment, we are going to write 15,500. Uh, then what about the accumulated depreciation? As you can see, pre provision, pre previous provision for depreciation is 12,000. As you can see, previous provision is 12,000. But in this year, how much provision uh, we did calculate it? But at this year, as you can see in the notes, it is a straight line method. But in a straight line method, we always apply the percentage on original cost. Okay, 10% original cost. As you can see, the original cost is 15,500. We need to apply 10% on 15,500 in order to calculate this value 1550. Okay, so the, this year's depreciation is 1550 and previously the depreciation that we do have is 12,000. Okay, 12,000 plus 1550 for this year, this would become 13,550. Okay, 13,550. So if we deduct uh, 13,550 from the original cost, the remaining value is 1950. Remaining value is 1950. So what we need to do, we need to add up this net book value. Okay. So this is the total NBV net book value. So this is how we arrive at the figure for non-current assets. But after non-current assets, we are going to write current assets. And first of all, uh, the order we discuss uh, in the concept, the order is reverse order of liquidity. So we are going to uh, revise it uh, in a while now. So first of all, we have inventory. Uh, we are going to write closing inventory. As you can see, closing inventory is always given in the addition formation that is notes and opening inventory is always given in the list. Now, we already use inventory once. As you can see, it's highlighted, but we are going to use it once again. Okay, so uh, I'm going to uh, keep an indication that I have used it once again. All of these uh, adjustment need to be used twice. Okay, this is basically double tick technique. Uh, we have already used this depreciation adjustments. So I am uh, writing double tick. Okay. F once while calculating the in when, uh, while making an income statement uh, using it as an expense. And secondly, while making an SOFP. So as you can see, inventory that is end, end of the year that is 17,990. So we are going to write it in the second column. Why? Because all of the current assets should go in the second column and the total should go in the third column. But there is a, another uh, current asset that is trade receivables and this we are going to write in the first column. Why? Because there is one more thing that needs to be deducted here and that is provision for doubtful debt. Now, uh, what amount for trade receivables we do have as you can see in the question the trade receivables that we do have is 27,900. Okay. The trade receivables that we do have is 27,900. So out of this 27,900, my dear students, uh, we need to see is there any irrecoverable debt. Now, as you can see in note number seven, trade receivables of 1900 are irrecoverable. So what would be the adjustment for this? Adjustment would be irrecoverable debt was debit. Why? Because it was an expense and trade receivable now should be credited. Now, as you can see, it is already highlighted. We have already charge this irrecoverable debt as an expense in the income statement. But this time, what we need to do, we need to deduct this 1900 from trade receivables as well. Okay. So out of this 37,900, I guess was the amount 27,900, sorry, out of this 27,900, 1900 is irrecoverable. So what I need to do, I need to deduct this from this value uh, in order to arrive at receivables that we are left with uh, is 26,000 I guess 26,000 now the point to remember is that that the bad debt also known as irrecoverable debt 
is never shown on the face of the statement of financial position okay the thing that is shown is known as less provision for doubtful debt okay so we cannot show irrecoverable debt here instead we just need to uh, deduct this irrecoverable debt and now we need to apply the percentage of provision now the doubtful debt as you can see note number seven it's written a uh, provision rate is four percent we have already used this four percent while uh, checking whether the provision is increased or decreased and now we are going to use this four percent again why because we need to apply this four percent on this twenty six thousand if i apply four percent uh, out of this 26,000 beta, 4% is doubtful. Okay, out of this 26,000, 1,040 is doubtful. Uh, and the amount that we expect to collect from trade receivables is 24960. Okay, so only two things uh, we are going to write in the first column. And firstly, uh, it is the cost of non current assets. And secondly, trade receivables and provision. And now this first column would be blank throughout okay and all of the items we are going to write in the second column and the totals of the second column would go in the third column okay after trade receivables there is another type of trade receivable also known as other receivable other receivables uh, contain dear students two two things one is prepaid expense and another one is accrued income prepaid expense that we have paid someone in advance we have paid more than uh, we actually need to pay okay so the extra amount that we have paid uh, uh, does not get lost instead this is deposit uh, from our side and we are going to use it in the uh, later part of the year uh, that is next year maybe uh, now as you can see in note number two commission receivable was outstanding commission receivable it is an accrued income uh, what does this mean this means we have provided services to someone uh, and for which we haven't been paid the commission okay so this commission is outstanding this means it is a receivable and it is a current asset so we are going to receive it in the next year and this would be a current asset that is 1400 now as you can see there is another thing that is advertising and advertising is basically prepaid okay so we already learned how to calculate this adjustment for advertising we are just going to see it here uh, and the prepaid portion for advertising is 3800 uh, we have already discussed this uh, in an income statement of surya this is the same question and the prepaid advertising is 3800 and this needs to be written as a current asset in the sofp okay so this would be advertising and this would be a current asset and this will be termed as other receivables okay now there are two other receivables one is prepaid expense and one is accrued income we can write it separately as well and uh, alternatively we can also write it uh, like this way in the brackets and we need to add up both of these okay first of all inventory then trade receivable then other receivable and finally bank and cash so sometimes the examiner uh, writes cash and bank separately and sometimes it combines it in one figure and this one figure is also sometimes known as cash and cash equivalent okay cash and cash equivalent or cash and bank means the same thing now as you can see this is the debit balance cash and bank so therefore it is a current asset if instead the bank balance is a credit then it must be a current liability okay so we need to write it cash and bank so uh, the order that we discussed previously it was uh, order by liquidity and it is a reverse order for liquidity that is descending order now what does this mean this means uh, it takes the longest time to sell inventory okay and it uh, it takes lesser time than inventory to convert this trade receivables into cash okay so to collect trade uh, amount from customers take lesser time than the time that is needed to sell the inventory and to utilize this prepaid expense okay or accrued income it takes even lesser time and to take out money from the bank uh, it would be uh, less than that and cash normally comes in the last so it is a reverse order of liquidity you need to follow this if you want to get a full marks in this question okay so we need to add up these uh, second column and the total for current asset would go in the third column 
Now, lastly, this non-current asset and current asset, we need to add up both of these and this would be a total asset. Okay. These are the final totals and uh, for the accounting equation, we got the first part right and that is asset side. Now, after assets, uh, there comes capital and liability, also known as equity and liability. So we are going to put the heading this way, capital and liability. Now, how can we calculate capital for a sole trader? For a single owner business, we need to write, first of all, opening capital. Now, the capital that is already given in the question is always opening capital and the closing capital never uh, given in the question. Now, we have already used this advertising uh, once. So, uh, secondly, so therefore, I need to tick it as double tick. Okay. I've already used this as well. Uh, as you can see, the adjustment double ticks are getting. Uh, then we have a capital. As you can see, the capital uh, is always opening and the closing capital is never given. The closing capital always needs to be find out. Okay, this is the opening capital. All the examiner doesn't mention opening, uh, but we know it is the opening capital. It is understood. Then uh, after opening capital, we need to add profit for the year. And how would we calculate profit for the year? Uh, if the examiner is only asking for an SOFP, then the profit for the year or with the name of net profit maybe is always uh, given by the examiner. But if instead uh, you need to prepare an income statement as well. Now, as you can see, the final answer for income statement, we already learned how to calculate profit for the year. Okay, so this is the profit for the year and we need to add up in the opening capital. Why? Because profit increases our capital. And if instead it was a loss for the year, then this loss needs to be deducted. Why? Because loss decreases our capital. After opening capital at profit, there comes the drawing part. So drawing anything that we take out from the business, be it cash or through bank or inventory, then it is a drawing. So all of the drawing would be written here. Now, as you can see in the list of balance, we have already a uh, figure for drawing 28,000. Now, we also need to make sure there is no other adjustment in the drawing. No, it, it, there isn't any adjustment in the drawing. So we need to write the same value that is there in the trial value. Okay. So the opening capital at profit for the year less drawing, this would become a closing capital. Although we do not need to write closing capital. Why? Because it is understood that we, uh, when we start off with opening capital and add profit and subtract drawing, the figure that we are left with is always closing capital. Then we need to write liabilities. Firstly, non-current liability, then current liability. But we need to make sure is there any non-current liability in the question. Although there is a loan, but it is not a non-current liability. It is a current liability. And how I am sure about that. As you can see, the year ends for Surya on 31st March 16. Now, any loans that Surya needs to be paid in the second year, that is till 31st March 2017, these loans are termed as a current liability. Now, as you can see, after end of the year, after March, April, May, June, just after the three months uh, of year end, we need to repay that, that loan. And now this loan would be termed as a current liability okay so we do not need to put the heading for non-current liability if there is no non-current liabilities in the question so we also need to write loan as well uh, and other than loan there are some other current liabilities as well now as you can see in current assets we write trade receivables uh, and then in current uh, uh, liabilities we need to write trade payables now is there a trade payable figure now as you can see uh, the benefit of this highlighting we can easily see which figures are remaining now as you can see the trade payable is not highlighted so therefore we haven't used it once okay so this list these list of balances would need to be used once only but these adjustments additional information these needs to be used twice why because this is based on double entry concept okay for every entry there are two aspects debit and credit so therefore you can remember it this this way that we need to use these adjustments twice okay so uh, we already saw what was the amount for trade payable. This is trade payable. Then uh, what other things that we do have, we have a loan. So for the loan, we need to write the complete name that is 6% as well and that 2016 as well. So if we are not writing these two things and we are just writing bank loan, 
so examiner will won't award you one mark for this okay uh, after trade payable would become uh, comes other payable and other payable contains two things uh, one is accrued expense accrued expense means we have used the service but we haven't paid the amount yet then it is an accrued expense and there can be a prepaid income okay although it's a rare prepaid income but still you can have this in the question now these accrued or prepaid are always given in the notes as you can see there is only one adjustment that do not have a double tick that is note 4 okay this is a technique you can use to make sure all the adjustments are being accounted for okay so the general expenses is, are accrued therefore it is a current liability so we are going to write it in other tables now there is another accrued expense that students uh, most of the time forget in an examination why because these are not given in the additional information and what is that this is a uh, loan interest now as you can see the loan that we do owe uh, to bank is 40000 and if we apply 6% on 40000 Four, four, six are twenty-four. Okay, so the twenty-four hundred is basically the interest expense for the year. Now, out of that twenty-four hundred, uh, we have already paid how much? We have already paid fifteen hundred. Okay, so if we deduct fifteen hundred from the original amount of the interest, that is twenty-four hundred. Now, the balance that needs to be repaid is nine hundred. Okay, so this is basically accrued expense. So we have used the loan, we have used the bank finance and the total amount of interest that we need to pay 2400 out of that 1500 has already been paid. Okay, so the 900 remaining part is accrued expense. So this was something else. This 2400 was general expense and this is the 900 remaining from loan interest. So the total accrued expense is 3300. Now, as you can see, most of the items are in the second column. And what we need to do, we need to add up all of these current liabilities. Okay. So finally, we need to balance the SOFP statement of financial position. Beta, this is the closing capital and this is liability. Uh, we do not have a non-current liability here. Instead, if we had, we can also add up. We also need to add up that as well. So what we need to do, we need to add up both of these in order to arrive total capital and liability also known as total equity and liability. If we add up both of these, this total should match with what? Should match with this total assets. Yes. Now, as you can see, uh, it is equal. So if it's equal, this means our SOFP is balanced. Okay. Sometimes students say that my balance sheet is not balancing. This means that asset side is not equal to capital liability okay assets must must always equal with capital liability okay so we learned how to prepare a sofp